video we'll look at taxicab geometry. Now this is an example of a non-Euclidean geometry which means some of the rules are different than the Euclidean geometry we typically study in school and by switching up these rules we can really think about why things work and uh, taxicab geometry works particularly well in a spreadsheet. Uh, it's very interesting what you can do. So we're going to look at circles and some conic functions and some other things, but I'll just get you started on what taxicab geometry is and how to set things up. All right, so just um, introduction. Uh, you can think of a city in kind of an idealized grid like this, something like Manhattan. And we could say a, the distance from A to B is three blocks and B to C is four blocks. Okay, now in Euclidean geometry, we would use the Pythagorean theorem and say the distance between A and C is five blocks. But you can see that in an actual city, that doesn't necessarily make sense. If you want to get from A to C, if you want to drive your taxi or walk, you actually have to go seven blocks. Okay, there's different ways to go seven blocks. You could go this way, and that also ends up being seven blocks. Okay, so, so in taxicab geometry, we change our metric, that is the way we measure distance, and we say that it is the distance along the grid, that you have to travel horizontally or vertically. And that changes up a lot of things. So what we're going to look at here is how do we define a circle in taxicab geometry. So a circle starts with a center, which I'm, I'm starting us at 0, 0, and a radius, which I'm starting at 3, um, but we'll change those up later. And then a circle is really defined as all the points that are the distance, the radius, three in this case, from the center. So we can define the circle that way with our new measure of distance. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to first uh, set, set up some formulas here for distance. I've made a coordinate system here that's kind of inverted on how spreadsheets usually do coordinate systems. And in this cell here, I'm going to put the distance from this point, minus 5, 5, to the center. All right, so in this case, we have, we want, we'll just, we'll do the coordinate separately. So for our x coordinate, our distance is going to be the absolute value of, of this cell down here and I want to make sure that this cell stays in row 11 so I put the dollar sign before the 11 and it's going to be the distance from the x coordinate here which I want to make sure stays in cell um, Q2 so in here I'm going to put the dollar signs before and after Q2. Now in my video on multiplication tables, I talk oops, talk a lot more about this um, relative versus absolute references, which is what we're doing here. Okay, so that's our distance from the X coordinate. And then we need to do the same thing from the Y coordinate. And now if we were, now in, the, in this coordinate, I want to make sure this stays in column A. So I'm going to put the dollar sign here and here. Now, you know, if we were doing this in Euclidean geometry, we would, we would have to be squaring these distances and taking the square roots. And you can set it up that way too if you want. Um, but in taxicab, we're using this different metric where we, we just simply take the difference. And I need to get the dollar sign in here. On Windows computer, you can just use F4, but on a Mac, it's more complicated. And to be honest, I looked it up once, and I don't remember. My other videos were all on Windows. Okay, so that's what we wanted. 10 is the distance here. And now we are just going to drag, and hopefully this works out here. Okay, awesome. 
Now, we are interested in things that have distance 3, and it would be nice to be able to see them a little better. So I'm going to go to the conditional formatting, and um, so highlight cell rules. I'm off the screen a little here, but the cell is equal to, so cell value is equal to, and in this case, I want it to be equal to this cell that the radius is in. So I can move the radius. And um, I think I will just, so this is the fill I want to format. You can do whatever color you want. I'm going to go for a bright red. All right, and then we can see our circle. And if we change the radius here, change the radius to four, oops, you can see the circle gets bigger. Um, so this is a very small screen. This is better to do this uh, with a big screen. Um, and one thing I will do is talk about how you can add a slider for the circle. Now you see I have this developer tab up here. In order to get that, you have to go in the preferences and go under ribbon and show developer tab. All right, and then on the developer tab, once you have that showing, I'm going to pick a scroll bar. Oops, I don't want it to scroll that far. Yikes. All right, let me. I'm going to just undo that, which you can do with Control or Command Z. And let us try that again. Try to be a little less. Uh, oh, I did it again. Wow. Wow. Hopefully, the third time will be the charm because I don't want to have to remake the video. We'll make a little scroll bar here. And. Um, so I'm going to right click and do format control. And so the issue here, I want to get this to link to this cell. And let's see, minimum value, maybe let's say one. We don't want radius zero. Maximum value, I'm going to make like eight because the screen is so small, but you could change those dimensions. Okay, and now you can change the radius of the circle and see how it see how it changes. Now one other thing that can be kind of nice to do is going back to the home screen. Um, we can we can change the color Change the color of the font here to white. And then um, even in the conditional formatting, we can go back, manage the rules, edit this. Um, so in the custom format, I'm going to also change the font color to, to this red. That didn't, that didn't quite work, but you can play with that. And so you can make it so that what you're seeing is only visual. So now I'm going to show you a few others that I set up. All right, so this is just a circle with a bigger font, and I, I also added a rule to color the center of the circle. Um, you can add sliders for the circles, too. So here's, um, here's two circles, so you can, see, you can see how they intersect. You set these up the same way. So this is an ellipse which um, means that the sum, there's two foci, and the sum of the distances to each point is the same. You can, you can see and you can set sliders to change things up. Same way, I just set up a different 
slightly more complicated formula. Hyperbola, you have a constant distance between two foci, a constant difference of the distances between two foci. You can make an ellipse with three foci and see what happens with it. Um, this is something where I just set up the formula so it shades a different color depending on which of the x's it's closest to. So you could kind of imagine, I don't know, these are school districts or something, and, and this is the school everybody's closest to. Um, here's a parabola where there's a, there's a line, a directrix, and there's a focus, and these are the points that are equal distance between them. I don't think I set up a slider on that one. Um, so, what is happening to my screen here? Um, let me get my home screen back. And uh, so that's the basics to get you started playing with taxicab geometry. Enjoy.